Hi everyone, it's Mr. Vallejo. Uh, welcome to biology class. Today we're going to go over uh, an introduction to animals. So let me go ahead and share my screen with you and let's take a look at the introduction to zoology. Okay. All right. So, um, zoology, as you know, is a study of animals. Um, it's the kingdom animalia. I'll remind you that all living things are divided up into six different kingdoms. And that last kingdom to study is the kingdom animalia. Okay. Uh, this is your reminder to uh, take Cornell notes. If you're doing it on a paper, it should look something like this. Hopefully most of you are using the Cornell note template. All right, what is zoology? Zoology again is a scientific study of animals. And you can see here two animals playing very nicely uh, in this photo. Actually, maybe not so nicely. It looks like uh, the reptile is the winner in this case. All right, but whether you're uh, a mammal or a reptile, here's some characteristics that you would have because you are an animal. You are made up of eukaryotic cells. Remember eukaryotic cell, EU means good, karyo means nucleus, eukaryotic means uh, that you have cells that have nuclei and many different organelles, all right? You are made up of more than one cell if you're an animal and you are multicellular. Animals are also heterotrophic. Remember hetero means different and troph has to do with food. So heterotrophic, different food. You can't make that food yourself like a plant might do. Plant is an autotroph, but you're a heterotroph or you are heterotrophic. And that means that you have to obtain your food some other way. Um, you get up and move and go get some food. Now that getting up to move to go get some food is called locomotion. This is different from movement. Plants move. You know, if you have a plant uh, in the windowsill, I used to have a plant in a windowsill that we would have to turn every, every few days, maybe once a week, because it was always leaning towards the window so it could get some sunlight, right? So you would, it would lean toward the window and then you turn the pot and then uh, it has to move again. So plants do move, but they don't get up and go from place to place like we do. That's called locomotion. We do the locomotion. Animals also uh, reproduce sexually. That means in biology that you have sperm and egg in reproduction. So um, that whether that sperm and egg come together inside the body or outside the body, inside is called internal fertilization and outside is external fertilization. There's sperm and egg involved in reproduction in animals. <clears throat> and animals exhibit some type of symmetry. Symmetry is the ability to, to see it as a mirror image. Like uh, you take a look at a human. If you were to draw a line right down the human uh, on either side of the line, you would have you would have two nostrils, two hands, two ears, two eyes right down the middle. So that's a type of symmetry called bilateral symmetry. Other animals, it's more like a circle, you know, like a, like a cup. Like if you were to take this cup and split it in half, then you'd get two halves of a cup. But then if you turned it like it is, you would still get two halves of a cup. And, and so uh, that's another type of symmetry called radial symmetry. You see that in a sea star, which some of you know as a starfish or like a, a sea urchin, a sea anemone. Um, these uh, types of animals all have a radial symmetry, a jelly. Some of you know as a jellyfish, but uh, a jelly uh, would have that type of symmetry. And then things like a sponge, uh, uh, a, a, uh, the animal known as a sponge, uh, does not have any dividing line where you could cut it down in the middle and get two halves that are the same. So we call that asymmetry. So even to not have a type of symmetry is, a, is a, one, one thing that we would expect. 
uh, in an animal. All right, so here's some notes on, uh, on eukaryotes. Remember, a eukaryotic cell has a true nucleus, um, and all of the complex forms of life are eukaryotic. Things that don't have uh, cells that have nuclei are called prokaryotic, and those are the bacteria. Bacteria, not as complicated as a eukaryotic cell. Um, not only is there the nucleus, but there is um, in eukaryotic cells, there is a group of uh, structures called organelle, and the organelle are smaller membrane bound structures that are listed here a lysosome, a mitochondria, uh, the Golgi apparatus. All these are smaller structures, so we call them not organs, but we call them organelle. And those organelle um, uh, are structures that have different, different functions. So because we have all these different uh, organelles that have different functions and have uh, the ability to do all kinds of uh, different jobs, uh, eukaryotic cells, animal cells have, have the ability to have, have different things going on at the same time. Remember multicellular means that uh, uh, you have many cells. And so in this picture, this is a picture of a whitefish blastula. And uh, it's showing that all of these different cells have different stages of, of uh, mitosis. Mitosis is a division of the nucleus and uh, replication of the chromosomal material um, the DNA in the in the uh, uh, in the nucleus. Again, he, um, animals are <coughs> are heterotrophs, and we are different from plants. Um, plants are autotrophs; they can uh, make food on their own by themselves. So, auto means self, and troph means food. Uh, autotroph. Um, plants are also called producers. We have another term also. We're called consumers. So as animals, we cannot make our own food, but we have to ingest that food. Okay. Again, locomotion from place to place, place to place. Animals need to move in order to get food. So that um, so some scientists say that that uh, the ability to move from place to place came because we cannot make our own food because a plant can stay in one place and make its own food, but we can't make food. So we have to we have to come up with something else and that something else was, all right, get up and go and move and go somewhere else and ingest that food. So, um, so that is what's happening with locomotion. Now for this one, um, I, I mentioned previously um, that sexual reproduction has to do with sperm and eggs, but this is one of those characteristics that is that, that go, that's true for most animals, but not all animals. Because if you take a look at sponges and bellies, um, uh, or sponges and and the relatives of of jellies, um, many of those just reproduce by by splitting in half and um, uh, just having parts uh, fall off, and those parts grow into a new organism. So that's not reproduction with sperm and egg. Uh, those are different ways of reproducing um, that are asexual, which means without sperm and egg. So this is what we call a, a not, it says you're not exclusive reliant. I mean, that this is a characteristic that, okay, if you don't have this characteristic, then that doesn't mean that you're not an animal. It's not diagnostic. Uh, most, rep most, and I, I made it uh, all caps there, most reproduced by sexual reproduction. Sponges, they can, but they don't always do. Um, and then, uh, you know, you, they reproduce both sexually and asexually, and that's true for some of the lowest animals. And then here are the three types of symmetries that I already mentioned. We have bilateral symmetry. Bilateral means two sides. Um, but uh, asymmetrical organism like the sponge that's uh, that's uh, shown here, there's no obvious way to split this in half. So um, that is, uh, that's the asymmetrical organism or asymmetry. Um, this is a radial symmetry. So if you cut this guy in half, you will see two equal halves. 
Um, as long as you go through that center point, doesn't matter where you where you cut, you can go this way, you know, that way, go straight down that way, but all those halves look the same. Imagine if you had a Krispy Kreme donut and you want to split it in half, you could split it right down the middle, or you could turn it and then split it again, and or you could turn it and split it there. And it doesn't matter as long as you go through the center point. Um, then uh, you're going to get two halves that look the same. <clears throat> and then finally, most animals are bilateral. Bilateral says uh, you can cut, can only cut down the middle plane to get two equal halves. Because if you if you cut down uh, this person this way, there's not two equal halves. There's a head on one side, and there's not a head on the other side. So if it has a head, it's bilateral. You'll see that is a, uh, a, 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 trick, a shortcut um, because sometimes it won't seem like it, the uh, organism is bilateral when it actually is. Like I'm thinking of, uh, of a mollusk. Um, you look at a snail, is a snail bilateral? Hmm, does it have a head? If it does, then it's bilateral. Um, what about a worm? Does a worm have a head? Hmm, does it have a front end uh, with the uh, eyes or or predecessor of eyes? Um, does it have a mouth on one end? If it had something like that, if it has a head, it's bilateral. So um, worms are bilateral. So those are the types of symmetry. All right. Um, we, before we start our, our uh, study of zoology, it's useful to know about taxonomy. So the science of classification. Um, everything on Earth divided into six different kingdoms. You can see here, here's the animal kingdom in the middle. And then we have plants, fungi, protista. Protista are unicellular, but they're still eukaryotic cells. Um, this, this group is also includes, and it says and multicellular, because it includes some, some organisms that are more like the unicellular protista than they are plants, like say um, the giant kelp off the coast of California. Those look like plants, but they are more closely related to green algae that are floating in the ocean um, called uh, phytoplankton. The phytoplankton give us so much of our, of our uh, oxygen. Um, I, I don't think most people realize that, okay, the, the forest, um, the plants, the trees, they help us with, uh, with, with photosynthesis, but almost half of the photosynthesis that goes on on Earth is done by the unicellular green algae that are, um, that are part of the protista. So <clears throat> not just big, huge forests of trees that are, that are going through photosynthesis and making oxygen for people, but it is also, um, just almost half of it. Um, they say 40% of the oxygen is, in, is uh, produced by, by the phytoplankton that are all over all of the oceans in the first, uh, first 10 meters of the ocean, the top 10 meters of the ocean so they can get sun. Okay, so we're gonna study the animal kingdom. Um, and, uh, and so when you study the animal kingdom, here are nine major groups. Eight of those groups are what we call invertebrates, and that last group called the quadata. So those right there, those are all the in, uh, uh, those are the invertebrates right there. So here the animal kingdom is divided into nine subgroups. They're called phyla, rohira, phylum. That's a singular of this word, phyla is the plural. So there are nine phyla. Eight of them are invertebrates, as you can see, and that's what we'll study in detail um, in the next few weeks. Periphera, Nidaria, the sea is silent. Platyhomanthes is the flatworms. Nematodes are the roundworms. Annelids are the segmented worms, like an earthworm. Um, Mollusca are soft-bodied animals. Some of them have shells, some of them don't. Like an octopus doesn't have a shell. Um, that's not obvious. Um, a squid has an internal shell. So it's related to an octopus, but it seems to have a shell on the inside. And then relatives are like the clam, which has two shells and a snail, which has one shell. The biggest group by far is the Arthropoda. This includes the insect. Out of the 1.6 million different types of animals that we know about, um, a million of these are arthropods. 
So we'll study these and then uh, we'll finally we'll end up with the Echinodermata, which are the sea stars and their relatives. They're spiny skinned organisms. The Echinoderm, um, if you've ever been to a dermatologist for your for acne or something like that, that's a, a, a dermatologist specializes in skin. So Echinodermata, spiny skin. So starfish, sea stars, um, uh, uh, sea urchins, sand dollars, these are the Echinodermata. That last group right there, that's a chordata. When we study vertebrate zoology, we're studying mostly the animals that are in that group chordata. So again, invertebrates are animals without backbones, and here's some examples of them. Um, and as you can see, this is a mollusca. Here's an arthropod, arthropod, echinodermata. Uh, there's another arthropod, and then here's an annelid. So these are your these are examples of some of the invertebrates. Remember, an invertebrate means that the animal does not have a backbone. And then invertebrates are animals that do have backbones. And you can see in this this picture, they're representatives of all the different types of, of vertebrates. There's the fish amphibians. Uh, do we, have an we don't have an amphibian. No amphibian in this picture, but amphibian is like a frog or a salamander. Um, there's actually three types of fish. There's, there's jawless fish, there's bony fish, and there's um, cartilaginous fish like a shark. So we have the fish and we'll study those later. Um, the, rep uh, the amphibians and the reptiles, here's the extinct triceratops. Um, then you have your birds and then your mammals. So those are the different types of vertebrates. These are animals that, that do have a background. And so most of the animals in the phylum chordata are vertebrates. There are a few that are not, and we'll study those um, in a, a, when we take a closer look at the vertebrates. Uh, those are the tunicates and the lancelets. Uh, all right. And so there it is again, the nine major phyla. Um, we're gonna learn these this way, um, but uh, here's some, some fun facts that you need to know. Um, we have the periphera uh, as the group that has the simplest animals. Also the group that has the simplest animals is also the periphera. Okay. And we have the largest number of animals is the arthropoda right there. And like I said, a million out of the 1.6 million. Most complex animals at the very bottom. It goes from, from simplest to most complex. And so the chordata are the most simple. Okay, so those are some things you need in order to uh, do one of the following assignments. So I wanted you to make sure you knew those facts. All right, so that's today's talk. Um, that's an introduction to zoology. And this begins our study of uh, invertebrate zoology, especially we'll take a look at all of these organisms in order from simplest to most complex, um, all of these groups. And so that's what we call organismal biology because we're studying the uh, organisms and studying them from most simple to most complex. So here we go, invertebrate zoology. It's one of my favorite topics. So thanks for coming today and we will see you later. I'm Mr. Vallejo and thanks for coming to biology. See you later.